University of Uyo has placed ban on students using wristwatches during exams. We're looking into the details of this and asking ourselves how well does this improve the standard of education as well as reduce the incidences of malpractice in our universities. I'll be joined by Emmanuel Oyewali as we have this conversation. Also looking at highlights where Adelike sues the IG and the AIG over detention. We also have a package about roller skating as well as another about food, food, everything food. My name is Olive Emadi. Hello, Nigeria continues in a moment. love and peace to go round so much love for the whole world on a beautiful day you're watching hello nigeria you are watching hello nigeria don't touch the dial hello nigeria Sit back and relax. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I am not alone in the studio. I am joined by Emmanuel Oyewale. You hear his voice every week on 99.3 Nigeria Info. And today he is joining us as usual to analyze the stories that we have. Thank you for joining us, Emmanuel. Always a pleasure. When I, when, whenever I see you, I feel like singing a particular song. Do what you song know? is that? Emmanuel. Oh, so what happens is we sing Emmanuel, you, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, get that, I get that a lot. I, I don't know, my friend, every time she sees me, she just sings that. Um, Emmanuel, you. Yes. Okay. All right. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Hope you had a good day. Yeah, well. Excited about the weekend. Yeah, well, for me, it was, it was quite a busy weekend. I mean, I said a lot of home chores. That was for last week. But this one, are you excited about the coming This weekend, one? I, definitely I am. I am definitely. I'm counting down the hours <laughs> and the minutes to the weekend. I Lord can knows. I can Let's imagine. start today's conversation looking at what's right. happening in the University of Uyo. And the management has banned the use of wristwatches by students in examinations. A statement dated May 20th and signed by the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, Professor Enoidem Usoro, said that students are now being prohibited from wearing wristwatches to enter examination halls, and the ban takes effect from the first semester 2018 to 2019 examinations. What do you make of this? Do you think that this in any way helps to curb examination malpractice? Or does, does this even really affect anything? Yeah, it does. It does affect a lot of things. Don't forget that if you read that memo that was displayed a while ago, the school, had, I think it was in 2006 or 2008, they had banned the use of um, ear, headphones and mobile phones, you know, in exam halls. Uh, so Fair enough. With those ones, at least somebody can be whispering um, answers <laughs> to you. Yeah. yeah. But don't forget, past are those days when your watches were just for you to check time. This True. is what we have what we call smart watches. Where you can Google That can stuff. store information, you know, in volumes. This is, you have phone, I mean, you, you have rich watches that are more like phones. That can, they can pick your calls. That can set reminders for you. That can, you know, tell you your body temperature, tell you how much um, activity you are carrying out How many day. steps you've walked, so, how much water you I mean, you've with those kind maybe. of rich watches, you can store amounts of information in the exam hall. But I think it's a way to check my practice. Definitely a way to check my practice because you, you can't assume that everybody's coming to the, to the to, to, to school with the ideal normal, wrist normal wristwatches because these days the thing just comes in a very simple format and then you just see. But there's so much that a watch can do these days. So much it can do. We even have what, uh, spy watches that can basically record, you know, and all that. So I think it's a good step the squad has taken to, to curb malpractice. Beyond um, banning the use of wristwatches in examination okay. halls, what would you say are some of the activities that we need or the things we need to take note of when, we, when it comes to banning or preventing examination malpractice? Because we know that not be today mm. in, in the Nigerian parlance, not be today this examination malpractice problem, you yeah. know, started. We've always had it. But what would you say are some of the steps that you think we should take? This is one step. What are some other steps you think we should take? I think the, the, the best way to, to I, I don't know if you can, if you can totally um, alienate malpractice, I think what I, what I think we can do is to, to reduce to the barest minimum is to revamp our educational system. 
you know, most times, ask yourself, why do people put you in the exam hall? Because they probably did not read or they don't enjoy, they don't enjoy reading. Now, I think one of the ways to make learning fun, or sorry, education interesting is to make it fun for people. I, I, I think I imagine courses that you, you, you did in school back in, and you, you didn't even have to read to pass the exam. Why? Because it was a part of you. You enjoyed the learning process. You can easily recall, like you say, you know, teach me, I'll forget, but show me. I'll, but get me involved. It's a part of me already. So when you have a system whereby education is fun, people are excited to learn, they won't forget what they have learned. And the exam will not be will not be scary because back then you scary. remember exam time people are always scared of it people have what they call exam fever days to exam people fall sick because they are just scared of exams you you hear snap tests and people start running temperature you know so if learning is fun people come to class and then they look forward to that kind of environment it will be easier for us to curb malpractice will learning never be fun because learning the thing is can be fun. you look at the people that are teaching yeah. these lecturers do they have joy in their own that's what i'm saying that it's a Nigerian, whole lot of revamping exactly, that needs to be Nigerian done economy is tough enough already definitely, people definitely. are angry so they are coming to work they're transferring aggression yeah. we have incidences of lecturers that will say in my class mm -hmm. then in uni the lecturer said to us a is for god B is for my wife. Mm. The rest of you can struggle for a C if you can. Electra you know? told me that when I was so in school. So at the end of the and day. I, I challenged him. I said, sir, first, I'm going to get an A in your course. That got him very angry. He said that to I told him, way. yes. I told him, secondly, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> I told him that, that sir, can you think about it? That if we fail your course as students, who really failed? Hmm. I told him that he got angry and it was a debate. I was asking, who really failed? So if you are a lecturer and you say nobody can score a C or a B in your course, it means you're a failure. So your joy you... should be that, well, I got an A in the course. I don't know how it happened, <laughs> but I got an A in the course. You Look know? at that. But, but, but I just feel that if, if people fail your course, it's simply because you are a failure. If I, if, that means you, you can't teach people to understand. If I'm teaching you, my joy is that you understand what I've taught and then you pass. If you don't pass, my job should be questioned. And now, we also know that a lot of them, you know the way they say hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, hurting people, so hurt people. Exactly. We are creating a cycle of people Definitely. that have been hurt and broken. So a lot of them, that have, yeah, no, have been maltreated by their lecturers. But, yeah, they have been, yeah. So, so a lot of them, basically, a lot of them have this history that they are when told them, you can't pass my course, you know, and they victimize them even when they work so hard, maybe they manage to get a C or a D. And then they have to pass that, that if I didn't pass the course, in spite of all I did then, who are you to pass it now? That means we should actually have like some sort of emotional intelligence course definitely, for lecturers. Definitely. You know, and and for then teachers. again, like I always say, imagine that there is a system that helps students to figure out a course they are best suited for. So I'm not going to study law because I feel it's prestigious. I'm going to study a course I, I enjoy, I, am, I have natural inclination for. It would be interesting. Speaking of courses you have natural in inclination for, a young man who was who is a TV um, host. I knew him as a TV host, but now he's gone on to do other things, still within the entertainment industry. His name is Harry Obi. He put up a post on Instagram talking about how OAPs and presenters are barely earning enough to survive and how he struggled for two years, you know, <laughs> within that lifestyle and then ended up leaving to go do something else. And now he's doing well. And, you know, the post sort of went viral. Lots of people sparked up a conversation. In a world, you know, juxtapose that with the fact that the Nigerian society frustrates, in a way, can frustrate some dreams. People have dreams of what they want to do. Many people look at the entertainment industry and think it's so flowery. They don't understand how mm. difficult Definitely. it is to actually break through in Definitely. the entertainment industry. Definitely. So people see these things from the outside. They don't have an in-depth understanding of mm. the challenges one goes through. How do we now keep saying, oh, I help people do what they love, whereas what they love might not really bring them money? Yeah, I agree. Shouldn't you be telling them the truth? <laughs> you know, there was, there was this guy, uh, I don't want to mention the brand name now, Tumba, what's his name now? He owns one of the best companies in Nigeria. He wrote a book where, an article actually, where he said that for him, saying people should do what they enjoy doing, you know, it's, it's not it. He rather, you do what you, would fetch you money. He had a point there anyway. But what I'm trying to say is that, imagine that you study a course in school. Now, think, think about it. A lot of people who are broadcasters, you know, basically didn't study broadcasting in school. Hello. Lawyer yeah, here so, in the building. You know, so imagine that you study a course in line with what you really wanted to do. It will be much easier for you. You understand? Imagine that you wanted to be, say, um, an events person, for example. You love to organize events. And you study a course in that direction. 
Imagine say you wanted to be like a footballer, for example, and you study sports management or something like that that has to do. So it will be easier for you to fit in. Because I you think before the we get there, what we need to do is to work on the minds of Nigerians and work on the minds of people. We generally attach esteem and prestige to certain courses. Definitely. So if you come out and tell people, I'm a lawyer, there's a certain level you know, of respect you know, that, that's, that's given that, to you. That's changing now. I mean, I mean, what, this is people I'm a lawyer. They look at okay. So, so what? What about that? I, I, I'm sure it has been changing. It, it it's is, why a lot of people like I said, you know, at the fact that we're bridging the the gap between mm. BSc and HND. Mm. Back in the days, like, oh no, 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 you went to a polytechnic. I went to a university. Mm. Oh, you studied. I studied law. You, you studied agriculture. You studied. Or they, you know, there's a way they just try look to make you. some courses look like they're less than the others. Whereas all of us went to university. All of us went through difficult lecturers. Mm. Studied our courses went to school in hard conditions where you're putting on candle, you know, to study. There isn't light. At the end of the day, you know, you, you come out in flying colors. Or at least you manage to graduate well enough. Yeah. So it, it's really difficult, you know. But I think, I think things are changing now. You know, it, there were courses in those days that people felt were, you know, um, demeaning. People are taking up now. There were um, occupations people felt were demeaning. People are taking them up now as against the very popular ones because they are fetching people money. Because being a lawyer, doctor, Imagine engineer, Imagine 10 years ago you say you want to be a social media influencer, social media manager, something like, there was brand, something like that. Digital brand strategist. There was something Your like that. Say, eh? what, what, what's that? You're a doctor. You lawyer. should be a doctor. But today, <laughs> an average social media guy would basically earn more than a doctor. True that. Now, very quickly before we wrap up the conversation, since the conversation started on examination malpractice, mm. let's talk about the role of parents in curbing examination malpractice. Mm. We know that it is not news to see that some parents would find that their kids are about to write exams yeah. and would take them to, to special centers Definitely. where they think you know, this would help their grades. Yeah. What do we say to parents who engage? Because some parents don't know that this is engaging in examination malpractice. Yeah. There are parents who even used to pay my time Pay for yellow paper. So yellow paper is some sort of expo yeah. that gives, you know, like clues or answers to the, Good maybe questions. to licked questions. And they pay for their children to get yellow paper mm. so that they can use to answer and excel. How do we get this message across to parents? How do, you're a parent yourself, yeah. you know, so you're in the best position to talk. So I think parents who do this basically um, are not helping their kids, even though some of them think they are. What they are thinking of is short-term, um, remedy or success so you have a child who has written a wife like four times he didn't pass or jump and you feel uh, having sit at home all the while let me just let me assist him you know so when you do that you want short-term um success so short-term solution but you are creating a long-term problem because this particular action will come to haunt the child at the end of the day the child will be dependent on such acts so you're building a child who is not independent of himself who always want to rely on expo you know for success who always rely on cheating as a way of life, you are passing the wrong values. You are not building a child that can be self-sufficient um, or sustaining. So I think for parents, you should help your child. No matter how the child has failed, help them in every positive way. You need to get a teacher, get extra lessons. Let them see that, look, you can understand this thing. And understand People that. People who are passing don't have two heads. And everybody must not go to the university. Definitely. If you find that your child is not again, good with schoolwork, and they are what? good with football, Register them in a football so, academy. Like I said, when, when I had one of, my, one of my guests on the show, I, I was asking her, because she wanted to be an entertainer. Talking about uh, Omotunde Lolo, I prayed for her to be a lawyer. But then I, and I asked her, so what do you think should be the role of parents in guiding their words towards you know, their career? So as a parent, one of your job is find out what does your child like at a tender age. Right now, my, my son will be two um, in a couple of months. I'm already observing him. What does he like to do? I see he likes to play with equipment. He can arrange things you know, with ease. So I'm already thinking, OK, he's going to be an engineer. Of course, it's too early to judge, but I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to see what he loves to do. So my job is to help see what he loves to do and, then and harness align it. him to that. So you need to go study a course that, you know, th that builds up that natural inclination. That way, it's easier to succeed that doing something extra that you, you're not built for. Very true. And, you know, with you've said it, you've put it, you know, in the best way possible. But I'd just like to add that parents should also try to work on their own insecurities. Definitely. Because what happens is a lot of parents are working live on, through their exactly, kids. Exactly. They're living vicariously through their kids. So because they probably didn't go to school, oh, my kids must go to school. Yeah. Whereas your kids probably don't want to go to school. I have an they want to do me, tailoring sorry, or that, do that, something fashion. I have an that, that once said that if he has only one child, the child has to be a doctor. Ask what the reason is, so the child can take care of her 
when she's old. I mean, <laughs> like really, no. Like, Allow children to live your life. To be a chef? You had your own life to live. You refuse to be a doctor to look after yourself. Mm. Allow your child to live. If your child decides that their own definition of school is not in the four walls of a classroom or university, you know, allow them figure that out. It's an out issue we need to look at again them. as a nation. What happened to our technical schools those days? Yeah. Not everyone is built for the university system. The it's schools. just basic. Very true. Everyone is built for that. But people need to learn a trade and they'll do better in that. Very true. So please. Ensure that you be a guide to your children. Please do not encourage your children to register in special centers. If you know as a parent and you encourage this, you are a cheat. And what you're teaching your child is that they cannot go through the process, but they must always look for immediate gratification. These are the problems. When we're talking about Yahoo Yahoo today, we're talking about internet fraud. A lot of these people don't want to go through the process because all they've known is how to get results and get them now. So teach your children the value and dignity in labor and hard work. Mm -hmm going through the process, and more importantly, do not satisfy your self-esteem through your child. You know, comparison, ah, my friend's child is in university, so therefore you two must go into university. Mm. No, you are a guide. You are not an autocratic ruler in the life of the child. That's all we have for now. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.